the trachea, this is the esophagus. Okay, so there are all these structures in the um, superior mediastinum. So from a superior view, this is how you will see things. Okay. So if you have a look at this here, this would be the SVC. The SVC RA junction, the ascending aorta. And out here you see the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery divides into two. It continues on as the left and the right pulmonary artery is given off there. So the right pulmonary artery, the RPA, it goes behind the aorta. Okay. So the right pulmonary artery goes behind the aorta. So that is the right pulmonary artery. And on this, between the iota and the SVC, you will see the right pulmonary artery there. Okay. So, that is the RPA going behind that. And if you trace it onto the hilum of the lung, you will be able to see the right pulmonary artery here. Above that would be the bronchus. Okay. So because this bronchus is above the right pulmonary artery, it is called the epaterial bronchus. So the right bronchus is epaterial because it is above the pulmonary artery. Right. The pulmonary vein is below there. So these are all the structures in the hilum of the right lung. Okay. So now let us do the same thing on the left. So when you see the left LPA, it gets into the lung here. The pulmonary vein is below that and you see the bronchus is below the pulmonary artery. So the LPA, the bronchus is below and it's called a hypoarterial, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, hypoarterial bronchus on the left side. So the left side bronchus goes below the artery and hence called hypoarterial as opposed to the right side. And this is the descending thoracic aorta, the esophagus, esophagus um, being part of the posterior mediastinum along with the neural trunks and all that. You see the trachea, trachea bronchial tree from behind. So those are things which you see from behind. Let's have a look at the SVC and the IVC here. So SVC, IVC and between the LA and the RA is the Waterstones group. We have dissected it a little bit to show you the Sondergaard plane. So when you dissect into this Waterstone group, to enter into the LA, when you open the LA to say a replace a mitral valve, so this is what you would do. So you would open out this groove and those are the pulmonary veins. This is the SVC, that there is the IVC and the Watterson's groove, the Sondergaard plane the RA appendage, you see the pectinate muscles there, the 
terminal sulcus, somewhere there would be the SA node. So this is what we learn from the mediastinal structures, the heart, the great vessels, the relationship of the branches to the hilum, the transverse sinus and the oblique sinus which we have shown you with these specimens. We'll now move on to the PowerPoint. Okay. So this is just a bit of a recapitulation um, of the of the structures. Here you see the you nominate veins quite clearly in this, joining together to form the SVC and the anterior part of the heart. Most of it is the right ventricle, the left ventricle a little bit beyond the LAD, the IVC, SVC entering into the right atrium. Next one. This is the view from the back. So you see the epitelial and the hypatelial bronchi, the right and the left, and the back of the LA wall. Whenever you look at a heart, make it a point to view it the same way it is viewed on an X-ray or in an angiogram. So that will help you figure out all the structures that you would see the structures which make the borders, the structures that constitute the majority of what you see on the screen in an X-ray or in a CT scan or in a angiogram, mostly for us. So when you see something directly anteriorly, this is what you see. Most of it is RV, it forms none of the borders. You find the uh, border formed by the pulmonary artery, the LA appendage, and the left ventricle on that side and the other side it's mostly the right atrium the LA doesn't come there at all so when we see something directly anteriorly this is what this is what we see when you move next when you move the heart when you see it from posteriorly this is what you see most of it directly when you see would be the LA but pretty much it is the borders are formed by the same thing which you saw anteriorly so when you when you have a chance to, to see a heart, um, you borrow a heart from anatomy, look at it on, in all directions and see what you see. When you turn the heart to a right lateral position, you find the LA at the back, the RA somewhere in the middle and the front of the heart being formed by the right ventricle. When you move it into a oblique position, which is probably next, which is probably a more common position, you find that the LA back. The LA disappears behind. The LA disappears behind the pulmonary veins just popping out onto the just beyond the RA. SVC on top, IVC below. Most of the RA being seen there and the border formed by the LV and the apex by the RV. So this is this would be a right anterior oblique view. If you move on to the left lateral view <clears throat> what you see going above would be the right ventricle, right ventricular outflow and then going on to the LPA and around the LPA you find the arch of the aorta. Um, below that would be your pulmonary veins around which actually these things go. So you view this like this. If you move it into a more um, oblique position you find that these fellows tend to disappear slightly to the back and more of the ventricles come into view. Looking at it superiorly, this is more of the anesthetist portion. The anesthetist will probably see it upside down. You find the great vessels like how we showed you in that little specimen, um, the SVC, the, all the great arteries coming off the arch and a bit of the pulmonary artery. 
So, when you get a chance to hold a, hold a heart, move it into all these positions. This is what the diaphragm is touching and the IVC and the descending aorta penetrating the um, diaphragm and this inferior wall and a bit of the right ventricle actually sitting on the central tendon of the diaphragm. That is why in an inferior um, wall MI, you get diaphragmatic irritation, people may vomit. So these kind of things get gives you an insight into presentations, symptoms, diagnosis, etc. Next. This is the picture which shows you the um, and cardiac picture which shows you the transverse sinus and the um, oblique sinus and putting the heart back in there okay the bring the finger across the transverse sinus like how I showed you and putting the heart back in there that is where the transverse sinus goes and the picture on the side shows you the oblique sinus The projections as you see in the next ray so whenever you look at an x-ray you think about what you saw on the real specimen so these are kind of fill in the blanks when you look at an angiogram when you look at an x-ray they show you certain things you have borders you have things which have enlarged you have things which may have become shrunken or absent but always your brain has to do the fill in the blanks with these specimens which actually you would have seen and loaded onto your cerebrum. Next. This is an MRI which tells you, you know, say if you do a stenotomy, which portions of the heart are right below that? How do you approach? If it's a redo, it makes so much of difference to you. So how much space do I have? How do I, how, how much care do I give? How do I get in? You know, these are things which will, which these sort of pictures would would tell you okay I think we'll now move on to the to the discussion about coronaries PowerPoint question. 